I'll put okay. start in, yeah so I'll put start in the in the chat so uh, hi everyone so today I'm going to be talking about chapter 23 uh in the chat I already put down the link to the to the sort of like the material the condensed version of the material um so there are, I, I think the chapter is relatively short in the sense that there are only really two new major commands to pay attention to uh but it does introduce a new data structure which is called the list and um and then lay and then how what these what these objects are what can we do to manipulate these lists and uh, what kind of um uh how, how to unpack them because it turns out that you could create lists of lists and then at the end of the chapter there's uh a new sort of like i, I don't know how to call it but there, there essentially you have a text file called the json and then this json contains a lot of information about uh you, you can think of this as a as a list of lists as well and it's usually the output when you try to get data from websites uh or if you use apis so I, i've never worked with one so the only experience that i have with json is uh uh when i try to export my bookmarks in a browser to an external text file and it saves it in that format and then that format could be used in another browser if I want to import them into a new browser on a new computer, let's say. So that that's probably the the most of my exposure to it. Uh, yeah. So that's those are sort of like the three things that you may have may encounter will encounter in this chapter. So, uh. So let me just motivate uh, why lists would be an important thing, uh, why these commands, why these two commands uh, are probably the only commands that you might be using and uh, and let's see where, where it takes us. So I'll start with the motivating example, which is the, the motivating example called gh underscore repos. So this is really a, a data set that contains uh, GitHub repository information. Okay, so to load this file, you need this recursive uh, package. So make sure that you've installed that because that's the that's the source of GH repos. So when you load this uh, recursive package, you can actually directly directly work with GH repos. And in fact, if you try to if you try to type gh repos on your R Studio, let's say, so let me just do recursive. Okay. And if you just type gh repos directly, it will produce a very long kind of thing. And you would notice that it look kind of looks a little bit different from uh the things that you've encountered so far. And uh that's that's actually the new object that, that the chapter is all about, okay, that is trying to discuss. Okay. So you could actually check that this is uh, what uh, what is called a list. So you can check using is dot list, and yes, it is indeed a list. Okay. Now, what does how do you actually see this list? So one way to see this list is through its rawest form. Okay, the one that I just shown you. It's a it's actually quite a long, uh, quite a long uh, output that is produced by GH repos. Okay, so it might be helpful to have ways to look at it without it being too overwhelming. Okay, so so what the what the book does is to put it into a tibble. Okay, and this gh repos actually in its first layer, quote unquote, there's a variable, there's a column that is called JSON. Okay. Uh, that is named JSON and this and you and and what happens is that you sort of like put it into an object called repos. So basically create a data frame. And then you will notice that it actually only has six rows. Okay. It only has six rows. But uh compared that with what you just saw earlier, 
uh this first th this six row tibble is definitely less overwhelming than uh than what you've seen when when you just punch it punch gh repost raw okay so that's the first thing to pick the, the first thing to note uh, the second thing the second thing to note is that you json has is actually a column okay a column of a column of lists okay so each row contains lists and then these lists have like this number here 30 so there are 30 elements and then here you have 26 elements so it's possible to have uh a column of lists and each of these lists inside each row uh, could have different number of elements, okay? Now, the earlier view that, I, that I've shown you, this could be overwhelming, but this one is less overwhelming, but not very informative. So there's a way to actually see it in a bit more detail. Uh, still overwhelming, but it gives you sort of like the, the magnitude or at least how, how far you could take uh, lists of lists. Okay, list of list of list of lists. So something something like that. Okay, so str. Okay, is called. I, I think this is the structure command. So this is different from the str from the strings. Okay, so str underscore would be those uh, commands. So that that would be in the strings chapter. Okay, but this one is just to see the structure of uh, of an of an R object. So the structure of an R object here is exposed in its full glory here uh and you and this is a bit more manageable compared to the view that you've seen earlier here okay so you can see right away that the object is a tibble and then uh in that tibble there's a column called json that has list of six and this is basically what you see here okay and then you would notice that in the list of 30 so this there's a first list of 30 here and that matches with this first list of 30. And inside that list is another list of 68 things, okay? And in those lists, you would notice that you have different kinds of data inside of that list. So the one of the advantages of introducing lists to you, sorry, it's the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, one of the advantages, uh, one of the advantages of putting, uh, of having lists as a as an object is that you could put things that are of different types together. So this is in contrast to a data frame where uh, in in each column it's expected that every row will be a will will be of a particular type. But if you have a list object, the contents could be could be different types. You could have lists inside them, like this one, like owner. Okay. You could also have characters, integers. Logicals, okay, doubles, floats. So uh, this object is very, very useful, especially for a model, like when you, when, you, when you do statistics and you want to put output uh, from estimation, estimation output in, 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 in a particular list, okay? So I think the, at least from a statistical point of view, this is a very useful way to, uh, to store uh results from uh estimating models or if you repeated the estimate models it's a good way to keep track using uh these lists okay so if you try in fact the entire web page is just to show you the magnitude of the of the amount of information that is available in that uh in that object so i'll, I'll just jump to the very end and you would notice that it's a very most of the most of the web page is just to show you this you know hierarchy and this list of lists of lists okay so let me go to the very end there so now that was overwhelming no? so <laughs> that was indeed overwhelming but uh this str really has that kind of a, a nice way to organize that uh, structure and you also get to see what are the possible values Okay. And in fact, str could also be seen here in this environment uh, part. So let me just uh, put that in, okay? So, so if I do this, 
Uh, sorry, I forgot to load this and I have to load the other one. And I think I loaded it already there. So if you if you click on this blue button, yeah, you will see everything that you just seen. So this part here in RStudio actually gives you STR, the output from STR, okay? You, there's also an alternative way to view this and it's to directly click on this one and you will see this, okay? It looks a bit different from the console actually. So if if you try doing it from the console, okay? So let me just load everything again. And recursive has three R's, I think, yeah. And then I have to do this. Okay, and then if you do view, yeah, it looks a little bit different. The output from uh, from a console compared to the R Studio view, it's they're kind of different from each other. You know, so here you could see things a bit more. And I think some of these are members of the community that are uh, relatively famous, like Julia Silga, you know, and yeah, JT Lee, there. Okay. Yeah, and Jenny Bryan and yeah, Maya Jenny Bryan, yeah. Salmon. yeah. <laughs> That's right. So those are their. Just, I think the information that was uh, derived from their from the activity of their repositories. Okay. So there. So, uh. In the and in, in the end, you basically have a tibble with a column of lists, and then some of the these lists could be named or unnamed. Okay, and uh, you've seen the name when you when you look at the structure. Okay, you would see this part here that doesn't have uh, a name. It's like dollar something, but here you have dollar Jason. Okay, so one that this this first one json is really a named list and then this one is no names so these are unnamed lists okay so and uh the chapter proceeds from sort of like typical typical assumptions about uh how people have structured their lists and the most common common thing that common things that they have or at least they share. So typically, okay, so this is not always true, but typically the number of elements of a named list list tend to be the same in every row. Okay. So that's uh I'm I'm not sure if this is community consensus, but or or something that, you know, as people work with data, they kind of realize that it has to be this way. So but Typically, the number of elements of a name list tend to be the same in every row. The name lists tend to have the same names in every row. And the number of elements of an unnamed list tend to vary from row to row. So those are, I, I think, what the chapter wants to convey to you about the difference between these, about some of the differences you may encounter with respect to named and unnamed lists. Okay. Now, the... The column that you've seen earlier uh, with JSON, okay? So when I when I put repos, you have this list here. So this is actually called the list column and you have unnamed lists, okay? Unnamed lists. Okay. So typically when you, oh, I have to be a bit more, I have to be a bit more careful here. This is a typo. So this should be an unnamed list, sorry. So if you want to unpack an unnamed list, Okay, uh, you typically would use unless longer. Okay, and then point to the column, which is a list column. So I I I I say you tend to because it turns out that you could use unless longer or unless wider, depending on uh, even on so unless longer, you could even use it in, on a named list. Uh, but it actually depends on your purpose. So that's the, that's I think one of the missing things from the chapter, like uh, you get to see these commands, what they are, but uh, it may be hard to, especially if you've never worked with this kind of data, it may be hard to think of a circumstance where this might be useful. So uh, you might have to bear with the chapter a bit, okay? 
that that's definitely how how I felt uh as well. So, um, if you want to unpack an unnamed list, you use uh, typically you would use unnest longer, and if it's a named list, you would use unnest wider. So when you see when you see unnest longer, it expands from top to bottom, and if it's unnest wider, it's from left to right. Okay, so it so unnest wider creates more columns, and then unnest longer, uh, creates more rows. Okay, and from a table of six by one, after applying unnest longer to the column JSON, uh, you now have, you've unpacked this list of lists into another list, okay? List of lists, but this time you have named lists, okay? And there are now 176 rows. So pay attention to what happened. So the rows uh, got expanded as a result. Okay. Okay. From top to bottom. Okay. So now you have more rows, okay, but still one column. Okay. And you would notice that there's another column of lists, but this time it's called the named list. Okay. Okay. So uh so once you have these uh named lists, you would use unnest wider to uncover them, okay. So or to unpack them. So and you would notice that you I now use a series of unnestings, okay, depending on the situation. So when I did, so I start with repos, unpack the list list of six, and then unpack again those named lists. Okay? And now you would see something a bit more familiar, okay, a table that now has one hundred seventy six uh, rows, and then now sixty eight columns. The unpack, uh, when you do unnest wider, you created more columns, okay? Uh, and then the number of rows stays uh, fixed. Okay? And you would see this time something more familiar, uh, like, da like data, uh, what a data frame would typically would look like. So you have the ID number, the name, uh, the full name of the rep repository, and then you see another column that is a list. Okay, and then you have other information here. Okay, and then you would notice that you would also have a lot of other variables. Okay, and if you want to get a sense of the columns of the of this table, you could use the names command to just just give you a broad view of what is available in that data set. Okay, and in fact, there's also a very nice, um, there's a very, because we're talking about these lists, I, I would unpack the owner, uh, column just so you could further dive into the hierarchy of lists. So here, uh, it's a very convenient command where, where uh, uh, the where command, which is really trying to figure out where can you find columns that involve lists, and then select when you apply select to where is dot list, you would be selecting from all of the columns of that table, uh, which is the list. And here's what you get, okay? So I selected only the owner column or at least the columns that would have lists in them, okay? So owner is a list of lists, okay? And I'm gonna focus on, I'm gonna focus on owner this time. And you could still unpack it. It's now a named list. So you un use unnest wider, okay? Okay, and I think the, there is an interesting exercise, uh, which I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure if there if it's really interesting from a broader point of view, but from uh from from the point of view of applying what you've learned in the past chapters, it might be a good exercise. Okay, so basically one of the questions in that section for the exercise twenty three point four point four, the first item. The question was to roughly estimate when the GitHub repos object was created and why you could only roughly estimate the date. Okay. I think this is a useful exercise in its own right for you to be able to see how uh, commands you've seen before could be combined here. And you've already kind of got a sense of it from this part. So things that you've seen from chapter four, like the select command, uh, could be very useful uh, in, in you know choosing what like really focusing on which parts 
uh, of the tibble to work with. Okay, so the owner the owner column is not. I mean, it could be interesting. You could do a lot of other things here, like these URLs. Uh, you could do some manipulation of these URLs. I guess if you want to automate or you want to export URLs or I, I don't know, there 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 should be a there should be a purpose for uh for getting all of these URLs and uh at the top on the top of my mind I I wouldn't know what. What to what to use them for at the at the moment? No. But there are situations where, for example, if you if you have forum information here in this table, maybe some of the links in the messages posted in a forum might be of interest. Let's say, or the attachment information, but th those might be interested interesting. Like if you want to find out uh, how many what percent of forums contain a chat attachments to them, if that's an interesting question to you, then. It, that could be done no yeah provided that you have this kind of structure okay so so to answer the exercise um you're just asked to roughly estimate when gh repos was created so my my attempt at that is to go back to the very beginning okay go back to the very beginning and look at the names of the columns of the original data frame so forgive me for doing this uh, let me look for names. There, this one. So this is from the from the beginning, no? list of six, and then I unpack, and then I unpack once again to have a column sixty eight columns. Okay, and one of the variables here, one of the col column names seems to be interesting, which is created at. So. I use this variable to answer the question. Okay. Um, yeah. So what I create, I selected the created at uh, column. Okay. Because presumably this is when the GitHub repo was created. Okay. And, um, and, ah, yeah. And I think I made the mistake here somewhere, but uh, no, no biggie. So when I, uh, when I look at this created at, I have this time variable. And I think there was a chapter earlier about times and dates, but I don't think it's formatted in this in the usual way you would expect. But so I so what I did here, because I I forgot a lot about this dates and times uh chapter, what I did was to use uh strings instead. So because this is a character variable, and then I needed I just needed to get this part of this string, okay? So what I did was to use separate wider position because this all of them have that kind of same format and I only needed the first uh, 10, the first 10 characters of this string and then the rest take it out, no? okay? So that's essentially what I did here, okay? So I create, I, I wanted to get only the first 10 uh characters of of that string and then once i do that actually i have to use slice max here sorry i have to use slice max so let me just change this okay so let me just show you what it kind of looks like first without slice max there so you now i now have a table that contains the year month and date uh that part that i'm really interested in rather than the times okay so only the because I am just asked to give a rough, rough estimate anyway, and then after that I'll do a slice max. Uh, year, month, and date. Oops, there. So the the oldest GitHub repo. So I actually answer, I answered the question when was the when was the sorry when was the newest uh, github repo in the data created and it's going to be october 24 2016 and presumably this would after that would be the time this gh repos object was uh, was created at least that's how I, how i would have done it of course an alternative would be to look at the original timestamp of the gh repos but yeah uh that might be the more precise uh, 
answer if you could get that information. So, so this is you could see that you've used uh chapter the chapter on strings and regular expressions. You've used something from data transformations, and then you also uh use the information about times and dates. Okay, so. So in that sense, uh, this is a nice exercise for you to to tr to also try and to do some other work. Okay. There, so that's uh, one of the motivating examples for you to get a sense of unless longer, unless wider, uh, how these unpacking is being done and how other commands that you've seen before uh, could be used uh, in this context. Another. Another motivating example is uh, from Game of Thrones. There's a data set containing the characters from Game of Thrones. Uh, this is probably, uh, I'm not sure if this is very, if the example here is very interesting. I guess for fans, it would be. For me, I, I've only watched the first episode of the first season, so, and I'm okay with it. So, so this, I, I, I didn't, this this was okay uh but if you want to see another demonstration of um of another kind of list of lists this is one of them okay so here you you pretty much go through the same thing the game of thrones characters are from recursive again okay they're from recursive and uh you load them in pretty much the same manner as before as to how they got to this file the the chapter really doesn't say much about it, okay? So this is something to either look forward to or to explore further, okay? So here you would notice that you have 30 rows. Again, you have name lists, okay? And you notice that they tend to, again, the number of elements are the same. So that's the tendency that, uh, that was uh, referred to in the chapter, okay? So I just did a nest wider and you would, uh, get to see the ID numbers and the names of the characters of Game of Thrones. Their, uh, I think this, yeah, their sex, their uh, when they're born, and so on. Okay, and if you notice, you now have other lists, like the titles involve lists, the books involve lists. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Maybe this is when there's. I've never read the the books of. I don't know if, if they are the if they if the narration is from their from their point of view. So I'm not very sure. And then you have TV series and then the another list for played by. So this is this is a little bit different compared to uh the GitHub repos data where you only have like one list column, but here you have uh other list columns. So let me just see the chat. Ah, okay. So Ken says that it's indicating which character it's focusing on in the book. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. Um, here, uh, so th this is the, the thing about this, uh, this uh, Tibble, which is a little bit different compared to GH repos. Now, you would notice that the list here for titles and for aliases, they're actually lists, not of lists anymore, but lists that involve strings. So presumably this will be, there would be multiple titles and multiple aliases for each of these uh, characters, right? Yeah. I see. Okay, so the, the different chapters in the book are set from points of view of different characters. Ah, okay. Thank you. I'm really uninformed when it comes to this, uh, to this uh, series. So there, and it seems that a lot of them don't have father information. You know? So yeah, hmm. interesting. There, um, and then in fact, the book also focuses on those list columns and you could see them here. And now you have more information. Like for instance, for, for the character with ID 10022, the, you actually have two, Two elements for this character, uh, two elements for these for the character title, okay. Meaning that this person uh had two titles and then had four aliases, one allegiance, probably shows up in three books, 
shows up in six of the TV series, I guess. Okay. And only played by one character, played by one actor uh, so far. At, at least that's how I would read this. Okay. And the book pretty much proceeds in really unnesting all of these uh all of these columns, okay? So one possibility is to create a table of titles. So if you want to see the titles, so for example, uh, so what they did was to go back to the beginning, okay? From the characters, unnested things, selected the title column, and then title is really an unnamed list, okay? So they used unnest longer, and then remove all the titles that have empty information and then show you what the titles uh, table looks like. Okay. And as you can see, 1022, as I mentioned, had two uh, two elements in their string. You know? So they, they actually have a list of two, two character strings. So one is the Prince of Winterfell and the other is the Lord of the Iron Islands. Okay. So hopefully I don't, uh, uh, I don't in, uh, so, Mentioning these names won't uh, uh, produce any, um, induce any, uh, sorry, uh, trigger any royalty payments, no? So, um, and you're in the, in one of the exercises in the book, you're also asked to create similar tables and it's pretty much the same set of steps. And it's not, probably not very interesting, but, you could do it okay it's just a matter of changing titles to the the column that you want to look into but what's intriguing is the part where uh the chapter sort of like um the chapter wants you to or not really wants you but mentions that it's possible to join all of these different tables together okay in some way and the key or the the thing that would allow you to link between or among these across these tables is through the character id okay so i tried doing that but it's but i'm not sure if this is something that uh that that would be interesting but uh, we we could we could look into it no? so essentially we create a character data set okay so get all of the get, get all the all of the character level information so every row here is a particular character okay and then the columns represent the character id which is the one that you would use for the joining of different uh tables okay and then their sex culture when they were born uh and so on okay and then what i tried okay this one is not in the book what i tried was to Put them all together uh, again this this might feel ridiculous now and I, uh but i i tried to sort of like proceed from uh from what from their statement that you might want to join them together but if you do do that you would notice that it sort of like kind of like multiplies so if i use left join uh every character id will now have uh you you will have duplicated rows okay to accommodate the fact that every character has so for example id 1022 okay id 1022 has two titles four aliases three shows up in three books uh, and has six uh it is present in six tv series so in that sense uh the how should I put it? The rows sort of like will multi multiply as a result of joining them uh, together. So if you if you use left join, which is from another chapter, okay, a previous chapter, uh, the resulting data frame becomes quite large, okay, quite large. Okay, as to whether this kind of data structure would be interesting, maybe if you're interested in 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 the in the books column especially so has have have titles change across different books so those might be interesting uh so typically when you have these kinds of duplicated rows uh there are there are columns 
belonging to a particular ID that don't change over some column. So for example, for the books column, it, the books column changes. So I, I would think that the books is the passage of time. Okay. And uh, the char character ID stays the same. Okay. And in each of their, in some of their columns, the titles might have changed. The aliases might have changed. Their allegiances might have changed. So that you could do a lot of other works related to it. So the book doesn't pursue that uh that angle but might be interesting to some okay and then there's another exercise where you see pivot longer showing up okay and uh you're asked to explain this code line by line why would it be interesting why does it work for game of thrones for this game of thrones characters data set but not, it might not work in general so i I tried doing this. So the, the this first part is not not controversial. The only thing new is really uh, uh, this part. Uh, essentially, uh, you're trying to look at the columns. No, okay. So when you do select ID, so when you do select ID and then where is dot list, you basically create a table that has the ID and then all of the columns that are list columns, and then from there you you create more rows because you do do pivot longer and uh and then you go through every list column okay and then you do a mapping okay so not mapping to names and name and value so the name of the column and then the values which is the for titles it will be the titles for aliases it will be the four aliases one allegiance six books Okay, so, so why is it interesting? Uh, I, I'm I'm not very I'm not very sure why this would be why would why would this be interesting? If you have an idea, let me know. For me, it's like uh, okay, it's good to know that that I could do this, but I I had a hard time thinking about um when I could really use this maybe it's only when i'm faced with a a particular question that i have to answer that that's the time that i would i would be directed to this kind of code but for now i i, I really couldn't think of a, of a reason why this would be interesting uh but yeah sorry I yeah no, sorry. Sorry. I can't either. It doesn't seem like you gain any information by doing this. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. I'm glad that you agree, but yeah. Yeah. I also didn't want to read the books or watch the movies, so I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So so maybe Ken, who has see, who seems to have more experience, he, he might know, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he says that it makes the data harder to interpret so maybe so uh for this one where he where they do pivot longer i i'm not sure what's the what's the goal uh but for for this one for the joining it may be of interest like as was i what i what i referred to earlier that there might the the rows are not changing over books oh well sorry you you have the rows represent the character ID, and then it's sort of like the evolution of the of the character across books. You can think of it that way, and then you you can look at the allegiances column and see if there are shifts in allegiance. So maybe you could do information like how many of these Game of Thrones characters have shifted allegiances across books, something like that. So maybe it would be interesting, but this one might be harder, right? So. Yeah, so I, I really don't know. And why would it work for GOT characters, but might might not work in general? And uh, this one I I didn't I didn't try to answer this because I was I was already stumped here. Uh I I guess it must have something to do with this pivot longer, this the way pivot longer uh operates, but I could only guess at this at, at this stage. I was stuck here with really trying to figure out why would it be interesting and that's also the reason why i looked into this joining stuff okay because i thought this might be more interesting than this one but yeah uh, 
Hello. There. Yeah. German. Uh, okay, usually why we do the pivot longer is usually if we want to split the tables into different parts. But mm. we can't do that in the machine so easily. So putting it in longer can help us like split later. Like you want a title table, we can split, filter them according and create our own ah. sub table. So that's why we always use longer. Yeah, because in patient data also has a lot of mm. nested tables and sometimes the, mm. the the clients want to separate them. They don't want to see everything. It's kind of like you say it's overwhelming for them. So you need to separate them and give them the correct type of tables that they are interested in. I see. And why this method does not always work is because uh, the values, you realize mm -hmm. that everyone is a character. So there are lists that you see earlier by the list can be a mix of things like integers, mm -hmm. characters, and nouns. So you were to do this method with a mixed list, the electric design error, you won't even see the values at all. So oh. you need to find other creative ways to, un to tackle and unpack the list. I Those see. more complicated lists with uh not just characters. Yeah, yeah. But you need another list, another character list, dates especially. Some yeah. dates in Excel and general form and text form and dates that are in dates form. You unpack them blindly by characters, your dates will become missing. So those kind of problems you will face. Okay. Thank you, Jeremy. The, uh, the, the think of it that way. Uh so I see, I see. So we could do filter. Yeah, you're right. We could do filter for names and then you get this this sort of like the table of all titles. But I, I, I'm also thinking about like, if you have that, we also have it this way. Like from here, I already have this directly. So I, yeah. So I guess these are different ways of doing some the same thing, but yeah. Uh, but thank you for that. Yeah, I, I have to think about it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was that was really helpful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. So the last part of the chapter is this JSON uh really giving you in, an introduction to JSON. Um so let me just show you what a JSON looks like first. A real JSON, a wild JSON. So um the game of thrones characters okay game game of thrones characters uh got it the, the object is called got got underscore cars but if you have this json part it actually gives you the path to the actual file okay and if you copy this and then you open it in a browser let's say there you could actually see it in this form. So this is one way to see these uh, uh, JSON files there. And you could play or definitely play around with, with this one and you could filter the JSON. Uh, can that work? Yeah. Okay. It's quite cool. Uh, another way to see it is as a text file. So let me just do yeah. So I tried this out before. There. So this is essentially what it looks like. So you have this is the wild JSON, and it's actually quite a long JSON file. There. A thousand lines. Yeah. A uh, thousand or more lines. And then you have sort of like the syntax for the JSON. Uh, and you would see uh, square brackets, curly braces. And you would see uh, the names. And then you have uh, see titles. You have, again, square brackets. Okay. Books, square brackets. So the, the book is sort of like giving you a sense of what it kind of looks like in text form. Okay. And then you could view it in different ways, uh, either from a browser, your text editor, or in R. Okay. So uh, let me go back there. So, so this is just a path in case you want to, to find it out. This would be different for your machine. Okay. okay. So essentially, uh, 
the chapter introduces you, the, the section introduces you to toy toy examples rather than this wild uh, Jason that I've shown you. But they they have this uh, uh, the the section section twenty three point five talks a lot about uh, what JSONs are, uh, what are the data types that are available in a JSON. And then you have an unnamed list, uh, something like an unnamed list called an ar array and an object which is called, which is like a named list, okay? And uh, each of the these have their uh, specific uh, meanings, okay? Um, so as you can see, if you see something like this, you have a really an unnamed list. So the Game of Thrones characters at the highest level uh, is really a, an unnamed list, okay? And then within that unnamed list, there are lists again, okay? And some of them are named, some of them are unnamed, okay? Um, if they are unnamed, they're called arrays. And then if they're named, they're objects, okay? And uh, for objects, uh, what's interesting about them is that they're sort of like a mapping. So it, here in this situation here, this example here, okay, it is an object that maps X to one and Y to two, okay? And then there are files that could be used to read these JSON files. And then you see this ST, STR structures thing. And then you have a toy example. You have toy examples involving JSONs, okay? So you here you have an unnamed list of objects Okay. And name is mapped to John, age is mapped to 34. Okay. And then you go basically go through the mm -hmm. specific commands to read this JSON file. Okay. And then do some unnesting uh, afterwards. Okay. Now the what the book doesn't tell you is that uh although you have you have, let's say, a path to a JSON. Uh, I'm not sure you could actually read it directly. So let me just, oh yeah, I think you could read it directly, sorry. You could read it directly. You could see it here, yeah. Yeah, you could read it directly, okay. And then put it as a, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you could put it directly as an object. So as long as you have the path to the JSON, you use read JSON to, to do the work, okay. And uh, yeah, and then this parse JSON is a little bit different compared to read uh, uh, read JSON. Um, so they're using it for creating simple examples. Okay, there. But essentially, that's the sort of like the idea here. Uh, and one of the exercises are really asking you to unnest wider and less longer depending on the circumstance and really asking you to play around with just these two commands and some of the eccentricities of these commands but essentially that's that's it it's not it's not meant to be a full-blown introduction to json and i think it, with respect to this chapter the case studies are probably the more interesting thing to read first before going into the basics just so that's why I I structured the the presentation in that way. Uh, do the motivating examples first, and then uh, hope hope you get curious enough to dig further into this. Yeah, I think that's about it. And I think next week I'll be talking about web scraping. So uh, hope to see you there. <laughs>